All right, so I am 43 days, uh, six weeks, which is unbelievable that I've come this far. I never thought I would because early on when you're going through a fusion, you're thinking to yourself, you're like, this is it. I'm going to feel like this forever. Um, yeah, so I'm 43 days out of my L5-S1 spinal fusion. Um, believe it was caused by a PARS defect, and I had a very small 3 millimeter slip of L5. So that's like very early spondy i don't even think it's a grade one but um yeah so uh i have come pretty far i'm pretty proud of myself um there were some really tough days um there are still some incredibly tough days uh somebody once in a video i saw said something like you know it's a roller coaster and i'm like yeah yeah, yeah okay whatever uh recovery is like a roller coaster I'm like yeah 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 but it, it's true i mean there are days when i feel incredible there are days when i feel like i'm normal again there are days when I'm in pain and I'm exhausted and I'm mentally somewhere else. Um, that, that sucks. I mean, that's all I can say, but those do happen. So I, I think number one, the first thing I wanted to talk about today is like the mental game. Um, you know, I'm, I'm 34. Uh, I was working two jobs. Um, I was teaching and I was working in an office before my surgery and I was experiencing pain for only about five months. I was pretty lucky, but it's, I was, now, I'm sure I still had the pars defect fracture from when I was younger, and I just never felt the pain from it or that I was aware of. And so um, I'm kind of going through this lengthy recovery where, you know, it's it's trying to fix a problem and heal that had been there for a long time. So scar tissue and those kind of things are probably building up, and that's maybe why I'm still experiencing some pain. I don't know. So the mental game, you know, early on, I'm laying in bed. I can't really feel comfortable. Can't get on the couch. Can't get on my recliner. It was just way too painful, way too uncomfortable. So I was really in bed. And um, I had just bought a new bed before surgery, too, ironically. I bought like a Tempur-Pedic medium firm, um, you know, firm mattresses, they say, are better for your back. I don't know. Uh, and I realized that it was it was challenging being in bed. It was tiring. I was tired. I was like, man, it's I could really feel it on the on the bottom center of my back where the where the incision was. Once my incision healed, I started to feel on the left and right of the incision. I guess you have muscles kind of down there, um, literally above your waistline on the left and right side. I really felt like a lot of pain, muscle pain on those. Um, early on, only my right leg, which was my affected leg, I never had any pain in my left leg for sciatica. That my right leg was just burning every day. I was taking ibuprofen, Tylenol around the clock just to get through life. So I'm really glad I did the surgery because I don't really deal with that pain anymore. But now it's kind of different kind of pain. So it's muscle tightness. Um, I had some muscle atrophy where my calf on my right leg is pretty much 50% of what it was. I'm trying to build that back up by walking and doing other exercises. The new thing I'm dealing with now is, and I guess it's the second thing I wanted to talk about, is the left leg pain. So my unaffected leg I'm really disappointed by this. Is now giving me some nerve pain. Nothing like sciatica. I mean, totally different ball game. It's more like before you've ever had sciatica, or if you've never had sciatica. Sometimes, like when you're sitting for a while, if you're at lunch, you're at a restaurant, and you get up really quick, you kind of feel like a pinch nerve for a second. That kind of pain is what I'm experiencing, kind of on and off in my left leg. I don't know what causes it. I don't know what aggravates it. I've been trying to investigate that as best I could, and I just really can't find out. Um, so that's been really tough, um, but I've been able to deal with that with gabapentin at night. I, I don't know if it works because it certainly happens during the day, and gabapentin is such like a brain fog medicine that I don't really want to take it ever during the day. In fact, taking it at nighttime takes me a while to really like wake up. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that. I'm I'm just hoping that that goes away. I'm doing some massage. I have like a, a massage gun that seems to help a little bit, but um, I, I, I think that's just going to go away in time. It's very possible, and again, I'm not a surgeon or a doctor, but it's very possible that there is some um, scar tissue that's forming that's kind of aggravating that nerve a little bit. And from what I've read, that happens from like 6 to 12 weeks when the scar tissue forms. So it should be in line with kind of what I'm experiencing. That may go away. It may not. I don't know. I guess we're going to have to see. Um, the way my surgeon does it is they do a, a surgery, a two-week follow-up where they take out the stitches or the staples, and then um, a six-month, excuse me, three-month x-ray. So I don't see him for three months, but I call and I ask questions and they've been pretty, pretty responsive. So some pain in my left leg now. So as of right now, I'm sitting down this morning. It's around 830. I wake up every day at like six, which I've always been a sleeper inner kind of person. But I wake up around six every day. I take a hot shower. Hot shower is so bad for sciatica. But for some reason, this kind of muscle pain, it really soothes my muscles. Um, so that's been really good. 
But um, now I wake up, kind of just get ready for the day. Um, I'm sitting in the computer chair right now. You can probably see behind me. Um, I've been doing this a lot more because I'm working up to going back to work in two weeks or I have an office job that I have to go to an office. Can't be work from home. Um, so I, I believe I'm going to get there for an eight hour seating session with taking breaks every 30 to 30 minutes to an hour getting up. So yeah, so that's the second thing I want to talk about, kind of my left leg pain. And then the third thing I kind of wanted to mention is, you know, where do we go from here? It, it, you know, I, I think a lot about when I was in the hospital. I was in the hospital for five days because my drain was still draining. Seems like quite a long time to do a fusion. Now, I did a T-lift where six-inch incision down your back. It's a little bit more invasive than a P-lift. They actually do a foraminectomy and a laminectomy and the lumbar fusion. So they do quite a bit of bone removal. So I believe in those, you know, my spine surrounding my L5, I don't have a lot of bone there. The facet joints, I believe, are also taken out. So that healing process is going to be longer. Um, I haven't seen that written anywhere, but from what I understand, because there's more stuff getting removed, the healing process is just going to be longer. Okay. Um, you know, when you look back from surgery five days in the hospital, and then you look to today, 43 days later, it's kind of hard to believe how far you've come. And I think when I was sitting there and experiencing everything I experienced in the hospital in the, in the early time at when I, right when I got home, you know, again, going back to my first point, the mental game, I really thought I was going to be like that forever. I, I had kind of given up hope. Um, I've talked about this in my previous videos. I said it felt hopeless. I really did. Yeah, there were days I felt a lot of hope and then you would just get dragged down again. So I've kind of, you know, been the person now, which I've never been like this my whole life, but I've, I've accepted that, hey, this is going to be tough and it's going to get better. And, and when you start noticing the little things, like I noticed I can flip over on, on my sides way easier. That happened around week three, week four. And I'm able to get up easier. I'm able to get up faster. I'm able to log roll quicker. Uh, I'm able to stand up upright and not really have any pain or anything. It feels good. Uh, I'm able to walk around my neighborhood. Um, the big thing I, I noticed on YouTube is a lot of these people are saying, I'm doing six miles a day, four miles a day. No. <laughs> one to two miles a day is, is good. I notice if I walk for more than two miles, my, um, I forget what it's called, but the center of your ankle that where it meets kind of your shin. Um, I forget what that piece is called, but that is really sore. So kind of like the flexor that's right in between your, your, uh, ankle and your shin is really sore. So ultimately you, you have to look at the things you're doing well. And that's what I had to do. I had to see, okay, I'm doing this well. I'm doing this well. Um, my fiance has been taking care of me. She's pregnant. <laughs> She's six months pregnant and she has having a lot of issues of her own with back pain and, you know, all the mental games with that. And so it's been a really tough household for me and for her for the past couple months. But as I approach the two month mark, the one thing I look back and the advice I would give to other people is people always say it gets better. And it's hard to believe that when you're in it because you're still having some of the pain or you're still experiencing this, it, it does get better. The last thing I want to talk about real quick is medicine. So early on, I was taking, like right when I got home, they brought me oxycodone 10 immediate release. And I took one of those and like literally didn't feel better at all. I still had the pain. So I was like, no, that doesn't work. So I, I got rid of those. And I don't know why some people even keep taking those. It's horrible. So I switched to Tylenol, extra strength, the regular one. And I've been taking up to the FDA max of 4,000 milligrams a day. But what I started noticing was, you know, I'm a bigger guy. I'm 250 pounds. I've actually, by the way, lost 25 pounds during the surgery. Um, it's from loss of appetite, some of the muscle atrophy, like losing some of my calves and obviously some of my arm muscles and stuff. So that'll come back. But I was 278 when I got, when I booked the surgery, I lost a lot of pounds the week before surgery. Cause I just kind of stopped eating cause I wanted to lower my weight as much as possible. And I got down to 269 and now I'm down to 251. So I'm super proud of that. I'm six foot three. I'm a bigger guy. So I've always kind of wanted to, to lose that weight. This is the, the you know, lightest I've been most of my life. Um, but, but past that, you know, taking Tylenol up to 4,000 milligrams should be fine, right? But I was experiencing chills, sweating, um, loss of appetite. I was pale. I, I, I had diarrhea, like all these weird things. I was like, what's going on? I couldn't figure it out. It was a Tylenol. I started doing some research online. And even though the FDA max is 4,000, 3,000 is a much better sort of uh, target. So I've been taking up to 3000 now feel a lot better. Before I go to bed, I also take methocarbamol. I've talked about this in my past videos, the Robaxin, man, that helps a lot. I'm going through my PCP for that now. And she recommends it too for muscle uh, tightness because I'll get spasms like in my glutes. I'll have my glutes kind of spasm up. 
Um, so that helps a lot. And then I'm also taking gabapentin to deal with this left leg. But again, I mentioned before that I may be coming off that because it just doesn't seem to help that much and it makes you really foggy. So medicine is important, certainly, but I, I think it's important always to keep calm with the Tylenol because Tylenol works. It really does. The last point I want to make real quick before I go is uh, I talked to my surgeon and I said, hey, I'm taking too much Tylenol. I want to back off that. I don't want to have liver disease. I'm not a big drinker before this, so I don't think I have a really messed up liver, but I want to be careful there because it is very dangerous. And he said, okay, cool. So what I want you to do is alternate with ibuprofen. And I said, whoa, everything I read online says no NSAIDs, right? Like don't take ibuprofen, don't take a leave, don't take aspirin because it can affect the fusion and have what's called like, I guess, a non-union where your vertebrae don't fuse together properly. He said, no, actually, if you take it in really limited doses, um, you, you should be fine as long as it's very limited. And I was like, well, what's limited? 200 milligrams a day, every day for 14 days? I don't know. So I've taken three Tylenols so far, um, 200, or uh, excuse me, ibuprofen. I've taken three 200 milligram ibuprofen uh, tablets total. Uh, when things got really bad in the middle of the night one time, I was just so stiff and so sore. I'd already taken too much Tylenol. I was already at my limit. So I just ended up taking one ibuprofen and man, I went back to normal. Um, each of the times were like emergency times, right? And it felt really great. So from what I understand, after like three to six months, you know, you can start taking some in limited doses, but I'm just going to wait for my x-ray to make sure I'm fusing properly. So we'll see on that. Um, so yeah, that's it. I, I just wanted to post this update and I'll, I'll post some more for sure. I, I haven't posted in the past few weeks because I've been trying to mentally play this game and kind of go through everything. So yeah, um, thank you for watching and um, I'll see you in the next update.